been a minute since I've made an effect breakdown. Let me go ahead and show you how I made that. All right, so if you look here, we've got the clip from the intro that I just recorded. This one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm not gonna be showing you the effect that I've already made, but you're actually gonna go with me and we'll make it together. Now, on with the secrets. This is one of many ways you can do this effect. Yes, there are many ways you can do it, but in my opinion, this is the most accessible and great way to start off if you want to start implementing this effect in your edits. And that is no other than Google Earth. <laughs> Pro. This is a software that you can download on your computer. I'll probably have it linked in the description. Yeah, I'm also gonna be showing you some things that I have struggled with with this because this does come with limits. I mean, it's Google Earth. And also show you different ways you could make it look better, a lot better actually, in the post-production editing after you achieve the effect you'd like. Now for this effect, we're gonna start out super wide out into space, out of this world. The best and simplest way I've found to add specific points and have the camera go to specific areas without having to scroll like this or do some other stuff that looks a little bit weird uh, is to add a little button up here. It's called pins. You wanna go to your set destination that you wanna start off with or end with. It doesn't matter which way you go, but you wanna click add pin and you'll get this untitled place mark. So for this sake, I'll just put And that should be it. You just click OK. And where did it go? You might be asking. It went right over here. If you go to places and you scroll down, you'll see your pin down here. Now that we have this starting location that we want, we can zoom all the way into the area that we want it to go to. I live in the state of Florida, but I'm not going to be zooming in exactly into the area I live all the way down and you can scroll and use your wheel or whatever kind of zoomed in a little bit closer and there's a reason for that i'm going to show you whenever we start actually putting this together and editing so i'm going to pick a random spot and then you can also move over here you can click this and have it go straight down so it doesn't have that weird angle but there are some instances that you actually do want to do that now you want to do the same exact thing And you'll notice on the side here, it has been added. Now I want you to pay attention to this. So if you click on the other pin that you added, you'll notice something a little bit weird is once you click on it, it completely shoots out like that. And most of the time you don't want that effect or that style of movement. So I found the best way is to start from the zoomed out position first. Even if you're wanting the effect to zoom out, start from the zoomed out position and then in the editor that you're using, you can reverse it and do it like that. Because once you click on the pinned area you want, the movement goes like this. And now obviously you don't want these pins actually on the screen. Just uncheck these, but you can still click on them. It just won't show the pin on the map itself. And if you want to know how I got everything plain, if you go over here to layers, it'll open up all these different ways that you can uncheck and check. And that's how you can just make it a flat, uh, not flat earth, but a flat canvas. Now let's go ahead and capture this effect. So we can put it, drop it in the editor and do some post-production work on it and make it look real nice. Now you wanna grab a screen recorder and just get it in a box like so, kind of format it. And you'll be able to fill in the screen uh, with what you're editing. So, all right, here we go. Now let's go straight to editing. You want to go over here, click fill. So that will make it to where it covers the whole screen. And then you want to find the starting point of, of where, where the effect started right here. I wanted it to start off still for a second because I got an idea for, for a cool shot. 
Now we'll start here, and once it starts moving, if you click Shift B, this is for, I'm using Final Cut right now, you'll be able to add a speed ramp. And we go all the way back to where, pretty much at the end of the movement. We're gonna drag this and speed it up real fast. And if you're not seeing this right here, this will drastically improve the movement of what you're doing with this effect. Or you wanna double click and you wanna make sure speed transition is checked. So it looks something like that. And depending on how fast you want it to go, you can always adjust the speed ramp. Now, again, if you have a certain style in the video, I've done this multiple times, you can go over to the color correction and adjust the colors and make it however you want it to look and kind of make it suit the video that you're making a little bit better. But one of the big things that make it look significantly better is adding motion blur to it. Put this on top of the moving area. Depending on how dramatic you want the motion blur to be, you can obviously adjust that yourself. But for the most part, this is what you get after the motion blur is added. Looks a lot cleaner. And now a good way we can transition into moving into the shot that I established. You can do this multiple ways, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a zooming transition to add in between. Let's go ahead and add that. And then I think I'm gonna add something from an adjustment layer that kind of zooms out from premium VFX, something like that. All right, I think I'm just gonna stick with that, keep it simple for the sake of showing this effect, the amount of different ways that you can use this effect. If you go back and look at my editing breakdowns, you'll see how many different ways I have used this effect. We're working with something like this. And so it kind of warps and then zooms out a little bit once it goes into the map itself. And so now let's add some sound design. So I'm gonna find some, I wanna add an atmospheric type of sound to it to start off with. And I also wanna use a riser as well with, I'm thinking a warp, warped type of sound for when it initially, you know, zooms in and then goes into the shot, right? Ooh, I think that's a good one. All right, and now we gotta find the warp. All right, so I think we got the sound design. Besides the music, I'm gonna add the music later on after I'm working on this whole entire video. For now, we're gonna look and place the sound design. All right, so I got an atmosphere atmospheric. So we're gonna add a little black space here. Add a little fade here, kind of gradually. And then I'm gonna add the overall space effect. Now you can actually add a freeze frame here to give it a little bit more space. Add some keyframes here as well. And then I got another riser I'm gonna stack on top of here. Add the warps, and there's a wobbling type of warp effect. So right about here, line that up. <gasps> oh, an impact, that's what I need to do. And then I can add a cathedral on top of that. I can actually add another one. Like that. And then up top here, I'm actually gonna add a slow zoom out. All right, so sound design has been added and some movement and everything to do with this is applied. So the finished version looks something like this. <sighs> so, Yep, that's pretty much what you get, and that's how you build it from scratch, pretty much. Now this one was a very simple version of the way you can use this effect. And again, this does have its limits. You're not able to adjust the movement necessarily unless you do some speed ramps. And it's a little bit, not too much customization when it comes to other things like After Effects and all that kind of stuff. 
But if you're making a project and you know you don't want to spend an absurd amount of time making an effect or figuring it out and you're new to making this effect, then this is a great convenient way to kind of apply that to your video. And now some things I want to cover that I kind of struggled with, but figured out how to resolve the issue. So you can just figure it out right now instead of having to, to spend a bunch of time trying to figure it out in other ways. So I've had to zoom out from an area and then make it continue spinning. But an issue with this is let's say you add a pin right here and then you go over here and you want it to zoom like it's rotating around the world and you add another pin on the other side. You would think that if you click this again, it might be able to go around the other side, but it doesn't and goes back the other way. So a simple way to kind of fix this is you want to add another pin a little bit closer over to this area, but not exactly. Otherwise it will go back again. Now we're starting here. We go to the next pin and right at the very end, you want to click the other one that you applied and it'll continue going. Now, if you cut it right in the editor, you'll be able to cut that little gap that it kind of stuttered or slowed down. You'll be able to make it flow nicely editing. And the pins also work if you have a specific direction like this. So if you're zoomed in and the camera is like this and you add another pin, and then let's say you wanna zoom out and then go to the other side at a different angle like that, and then you add another pin. There can be some pretty unique ways you can use this effect. I've been asked multiple times how I make this effect, so I wanted to put a simple explanation for you if you wanted to use it or apply it in future videos and learn more about it. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it. And I actually have another effect breakdown that I think you might like, and it's right here, you can check that out. But that will be all for today, and I will see you at the next edit.